Jesus reads his eyes to heaven and says, Holy Father, keep the Lord who have given me true to your name, so that they may be one like us. While I was with them, I kept the Lord who have given me true to your name. I watched over them, and not one is lost, except the one who chose to be lost. This was to fulfill the scripture. But now I am coming to you, and while I was still in the world, I say these things to share my joy with them to the truth. I pass your work unto them, and the world hated them, for they belong to the world, no more than I belong to the world. I am not asking to remove them from the world, but to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Concentrate them in the truth, your word is truth. Are you sent me into the world, I send them into the world, and for their sake I concentrate myself. So they too may be consecrated in truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Good morning. I know we can't sing. I know we can't chant. I know that we can't shout. I know all the things we can't do. You know, the one thing I find myself doing quite a lot is this. Because I don't know about you, but I'm beginning to get rather worn out. The uh, restrictions were different and complicated and everything else to begin with. Even the restrictions took some of our brain power. But I feel now we're at that point where we're just exhausted. Exhausted of actually doing very little. Because I know there are some of us who have taken the opportunity to become more fit during the COVID pandemic. I'm not one of them. I know there are some people who have taken to going through their massive books they have to read or um, some of their writing they want to do. I'm not one of them. I thought I would be one of them, but I'm not. And thinking about preaching today, I thought, so I'm finding this all so tiring. Am I actually learning more about myself? Am I coming face to face with myself? Because all of my distractions are slowly ebbing away. Let's hope soon everything will start to get back to normal. But how long is it going to take us, I wonder, to get that energy back? Our normal distractions are gone, unless our normal distra distractions are things we do in our homes. So what have we been doing? What have we been thinking of? We may well have been bored stiff. We may have found new challenges. But our choices aren't the same as they used to be. As I'm sure you know, we had a break in here recently. And much as I be honest, I swore rather a lot, I recognize that that may have been because there were people so desperate for money, they would try to rob the church. It may not be, of course, but it could be. But thankfully, even when I and perhaps you find these times difficult, things fall to the wayside that we might have usually done. I'm very thankful that God hasn't finished with us yet. He certainly hasn't finished with me. As you know, next week is Pentecost and also our APCM. If you've been asked to wear something red next week, if you're coming to church, and to our virtual congregation, you can still wear red. It might be a red pajama top, but you can still wear red. Jesus promised that he would be with us always. Now, how did that happen? He came down to earth, and then as we celebrated this year, after the crucifixion and the resurrection, he ascended. So during last week, we celebrated Jesus returning to the Father. And next week, 
we're going to celebrate the Holy Spirit leaving the Trinity in that sort of grouping. I wonder why that is. I wonder why Jesus went, but then they'd already worked out that we actually needed constant help. They'd worked out, the Trinity had worked out, that left to our own devices, we may well end up, like some of us have done during the pandemic, not doing what we could, or we should, or doing what we shouldn't. Our readings today talk an awful lot about love. And reading them, actually, you're left in no doubt that love is the thing that marks us out as Christians. I was uh, looking at a quote from G.K. Chesterton, that's the person who wrote uh, the Father Brown um, books. And he said two things. But one of them, two things that I'm going to use, but one of them is going to church and not being a Christian is like standing in a garage and thinking you're a car, which I thought was quite, quite apt. So the Holy Spirit is with us. We'll be celebrating the fact next week, but the Holy Spirit is with us now and knows that our help, we need some help. Jesus sacrificed himself for unity of his people and the world and for love. And we're called to do something similar. The Spirit knows that that's the way we grow, that's the way we become a community, with love and with sacrifice. But of course, um, from the Psalms we hear God doesn't want a sacrifice, he wants our hearts. So what sort of sacrifice are we asked to give? I think for me, I can think of many things that I think God is calling me to do now that I'm finding difficult. I know that many people of this church have grown our community by phoning each other when they couldn't meet in person. But I wonder if I'm the only one who thinks it's going to be quite difficult contacting X, particularly now because there's nothing new to talk about. I've gone through all the stuff that we know about and their life hasn't changed much and neither has mine. I'm not doing anything different and neither are they. But perhaps the sacrifice is to just keep going, keep on loving. And if it's the way you find difficult, that's what the Spirit's there for, to give you a hand if you ask for it. So many things about being a Christian are hard. One of the things I find the most hard is that we don't actually have that many rules. We aren't actually told how many minutes a day we have to pray. We aren't actually told many things. That leaves us to each have our own unique brand of Christianity. Coming together as a family like this, that pulls us together, but in that we are all unique. What we are called to do is unique. And when we're called to love, as our readings have said that this morning, we need to think about how we do it. The moment it's quite different to how we did it before. But love is what counts. We are standing not in a garage, but if we were in a garage, we wouldn't be pretending to be cars because we are. We are called to work together, to sacrifice together perhaps. But that's how Jesus said, people will know who we are. We follow him because we love. And sometimes that's more difficult than others. So we keep on trying our best. Because that's what God wants. Our very best. Sometimes it's not very good. But if we can give our best to God, to build his church, his family, 
And surely that is the greatest gift of love we can give back. Amen. who brought again from the dead of our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of his sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen.